This is our topic tonight. This video clip was recorded two days ago in Bozeman, Montana. What do you think of this? Does it impact our view? Welcome to What's Up Wednesday. My name is Scott. Thanks for joining the program tonight. Um, it's kind of a serious topic tonight. Normally we have a lot of fun. We're going to have fun um, anyway, but um, just welcome to What's Up Wednesday on my YouTube channel, Go Small, Live Large. I see a lot of regulars and some new folks already, which is great. Um, we do have the serious topic tonight because I'm seeing this and it's it's kind of in the news. In fact, if you saw the um, news uh RV News Headlines video I put out on Tuesday. Uh, this is really getting to be a problem. And people are trying to tackle it, which is pretty awesome. So the topic tonight is dwellers on junk RVs on streets in encampments. And I was quickly, uh, what's the right word, corrected by probably the first or second comment on the RV News Headlines story about the homeless RV park opening in Portland, Oregon. The person was quick to point out is they weren't homeless at all. They're living in RVs, just like me, my fifth year. So fair enough. So what we're calling it is dwellers in junk RVs on streets in encampments. Now, I have no clue what their income status is. Are they drug addicts? Are they just lazy people? Down, like, whatever it is, right? It's the condition they're putting the vehicles in those communities in and the impact on us. That's what we want to talk about tonight. I did a survey. Let me zoom in here for you. Uh, this afternoon, I am glad to see and not surprised at this. If you've been RVing around, you've probably seen some of this. And uh, we want to talk about that tonight. But before we get into all the nitty gritty, let's um, share some of the information with you. This, we have a roundup coming up uh, next Friday. Uh, let me zoom in here for you. This is in uh, greater Chicagoland. So if you're in Southern Wisconsin, Iowa, Illinois, Michigan, Southern, um, come join us in Rockford, Illinois on Friday the 18th at 10 a.m. at Winnebago Motorhomes. Uh, there's information on my website there, gosmalllivelarge.com about all the events. But come join us. We are gonna have a blast uh, together and then we're gonna sneak out for lunch in the great town of Rockford, Illinois. This is my home dealer of the Travado. I bought my Travado from, I ordered it in June of 18, 2018. Got delivery of October, 2018. And my life has forever been changed. And some of you know what I'm talking about. So come join us. He's just a great uh, family business. And uh, we love to support folks like that. Let me back away from the camera. Sorry, I'm getting excited already. Um, Libation Live tonight, we're doing a Knob Hill. This is kind of one of my favorites. Uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit by the way libations live all about taste from the road um and this day in history uh the second atom bomb was dropped on japan uh so we do love taking your questions if you can help us out with a format and that is to use three stars three question marks and then your question or comment that helps me see it more readily um if you are a regular on the program thanks for letting us be in your ears and eyes again this wednesday if you see somebody asking a question that isn't using the format if you could gently tap them because i might miss them because i really look for this because we got a lot of questions we've got a big group in here already tonight um anything's on the table if you don't want to talk about uh dwellers in dilapidated rvs on city streets and encampments homeless RVers, um you can ask me anything um, not much i haven't done or seen in my um, nearly five years of full-time travel in my van. Um, if you want to do the super chat thing, let me zoom in here for you. Uh, just press the um, the dollar button uh, next to the chat field and any dollar amount is appreciated. And what this does is it immediately uh, elevates your question and then we will jingle the jar when we uh, read your question. So we pay attention to those. And uh, thank you for all the donations. Goes right to a good cause. <laughs> or maybe this is more the cause right there. Um, and if you're playing the, the jingle jar game, this comes from uh, Roads of Life. We'll talk about him in just a second. Um, when they hear the jingle jar, then they um, have a, a sip of whatever the libation they're having. So that's what that's all about. Uh, continuing on, uh, let's know where you're watching from. Um, there's a country I'm missing. They announced it a couple of weeks ago. Um, they haven't been back or haven't um, reached out. 
Uh, I'm super bummed. It was a European country. But if you don't see your country's flag on the map, please um, do in the comments so that it can be seen, and I will write it down somehow and um, not miss that. We want to honor all the uh, countries that, that participate in this program. Where am I coming at you from? I'm going to give you an RV tip right out of the gate tonight. Uh, I'm coming at you from the awesome town of Rapid City, South Dakota. How many people have been there? Tomorrow night, I'm going to be boondocking BLM land camping in the Badlands. I'm so pumped for that. Um, here's the RV tip. This is the outside of my van, right? There is a cab, right? Um, that's the view. Now, if I'm in a uh, KOA because it's extremely hot, I was going to street camp tonight, but it's just, it's too hot. And it's Sturgis Festival, so the place is just swarmed with bikers, which is cool. I don't know, on both sides of me. Uh, maybe I'll have some bourbon with them later. Um, but this is a back in sight in a, a KOA. Last night, I was a harvest host in Gillette, Gillette, Wyoming. And if I backed in like I'm supposed to, this would be the view out my window versus a pull-in site, which is what I call them, because what would you rather look at? This? Let me give you the full effect here, ladies and gentlemen, or this? I don't think it's a contest at all, so that's where I'm coming at you from. Um, now, I get away with this 80, 90% of the time. Sometimes the KOA comes and scolds me or the RV park, but um, in which case, fine, I'll turn around. But um, I'd much rather look at the leaves and the bees. What do you think? Um, here's where uh, Rapid City is. If you haven't been there, um, it's kind of on the wee western side of um, South Dakota. I just uh, came out of Billings two days ago. was in Gillette last night. And then um, being in the Badlands tomorrow, I'm super pumped for that. It's pretty hot, ladies and gentlemen. It's August. What do we expect? Um, it's triple digits, really kind of across uh, much of Texas and Arizona and even New Mexico, uh, where I'm at uh, hot, 82 degrees, not extreme. Uh, pricing in the area uh, for gas, um, about a 44 cent spread, uh, about $3.89 is kind of the what I've been seeing, which I'm a little shocked by uh, South Dakota prices and was shocked by Wyoming prices. They were actually more expensive than Idaho. And if you want to buy a house in Rapid City, it's um, reasonably priced, kind of depending on where you're going to be. Um, I've seen a lot of, um, I've not been here for about a year, maybe, maybe even two years. I can't really remember. Um, a lot of new construction. Holy cow. Everywhere I go, there's new construction. Uh, what else do I have for us? And then let's get into so We got some announcements here. So take a screenshot of this, please. Um, because we want everybody to participate as much as they are able. Um, well, we're going to say howdy to folks throughout the program. Um, if you have a, uh, uh, a van story or a trip in your van that you want to share on this program, What's Up Wednesday, we've had a number of pe people reach out. This is the email address to use. And this kind of brings us to our guest next week. This is Roads of Life. They have a YouTube channel. They are an embassy RV owner. He is just free from the corporate shackles um, literally just a week ago. And he is chomping at the bit to come on and tell his story, his and hers, wife, uh, him and his wife's story. Um, they're lovely people and they are so pumped. So that's next Wednesday, Roads of Life, August 16. I think I got the date right. And um, you don't want to miss that. Uh, events and Zoom. Let me zoom in here for you so you can see this. That always helps. Uh, we did the uh, roundup in Billings. It was a party of one. That'd be me. And uh, I'm really excited about the Rockford meetup, roundup, whatever you want to call it. We call them roundups at uh, in Rockford, Illinois. Um, please, if you're in the area, call in sick. Take the day off. Let's talk vans. Let's talk travel. Let's talk um, whatever's on your mind. We just love these things. And it's a really kind of nice place, um, location, because it's not in Chicago. It's about 90 minutes uh, due west. So it's easy to get to. It's a nice drive. Um, if you haven't been to Rockford, it's a great little town. There's a number of campgrounds around if you want to make a weekend of it. Uh, so that's the deal there. More, but here we go. Um, the uh, For Patreon folks, I have canceled the um, in-person wall because that was supposed to happen um, two days from now, but it's not going to happen. I'm on a fast track to get to my destinations, um, including that roundup. So we are not going to do that. So if you're in the wall, South Dakota area, I apologize. We'll do something down the road. Um, however, the Zoom for the True Believer level Patreon supporters is happening on Saturday, the 12th of August. 
And a big shout out to Dennis M, who's our newest uh, GSLL Patreon supporter. Um, these folks are are awesome people, and we just love getting together as a group, and it um, helps us all um, share in a, in a really kind of intimate setting on Zoom, not on YouTube. It's pretty amazing. Um, and I share a lot of pictures of where I'm going, stuff that you'll never see on YouTube or Instagram. Um, I post there for the Patreon folks. And then we've been talking about this for a number of months. Um, the uh, Volta camp out is um, in just a couple of weeks. They are sold out, uh, which I'm uh, glad to say, um, or at least registration is is closed. I, I assume they're, they're sold out. Um, the Adventure Van Expo in Chattanooga is coming up in just a couple of months. Uh, we will be there for that. And then there's the um, February 2024 event uh, that we're putting our stake in the ground. And this is what it looks like. Uh, it's February 16, 19, 2024, uh, near Dade City, which is about an hour-ish, kind of east of Tampa. Uh, the Birds of a Feather area is sold out. That's our group, but the discount code still applies. So uh, there's never been a better time to be in Florida than in February. And um, that is probably the, my favorite time of year is January, February in, Fl in Florida because it's not hot. <laughs> it's not humid. In fact, it gets kind of chilly on the Tampa side in January. All right, let's say hi to some folks, answer some questions, and we're going to get into our uh, topic tonight. Let me have a swig here. How y'all doing? Thanks for being here. Uh, we got a big group. It's just an honor for y'all to be, uh, be here. Uh, well, we got to honor what we talked about. So here is Alfred. Uh, uh oh, where's Alfred's? Oh, there's a lot, a lot of banter going on here, so I love it. Alfred, there you are, sir. There we go. For the good cause. Thank you, Alfred. He's a great guy. <laughs> He's so amazing. Thank you, Alfred. I appreciate that. Uh, very generous of you, sir. That's what it looks like, and that's how it works. Thank you for that demonstration. Um, so let's I'll answer some questions. I'm going to get into the meat of the matter. Uh, so Peggy wants to know, uh, well, here's Dave in Les Summit. I'm not sure what goofball you're uh, referring to here, Dave. Um but thanks for being here. <laughs> Peggy wants to know, uh, where are most of these located or is it getting more prevalent everywhere? I'd say it's it's varying degrees of everywhere. Um, it's really bad on the West Coast. They have got a serious, serious problem. I would include Las, uh, ne ne um, Nevada, ne Vegas. Nevada with that. Uh, Nevada, Las Vegas is a mess. Um, it's really bad. Even... Yassan Bozeman, that is not exactly a ultra liberal town. And I'm really sad to say that that whole half mile um, there or a little bit less was in between some beautiful brand new um, construction hotels on this side, apartments on that side of that street. I couldn't believe it. It looked a little city sanctioned to me because um, it was pretty clean by some standards. You'll see some of these pictures, but I'm sad to say wherever I go and we're going to show some of those pictures, it's, um, let me adjust this just a little bit. Um, it's everywhere in varying degrees. Um, so we got uh, Eric in the house. Good to have you. Uh, Sharon's in the house. This is great. Uh, Mason Mike, um, I did not get to read your thing. So you might um, have to really help me out. <laughs> I don't know how that would happen. Um, but he, he's got a... Um, today was a travel day, so I'm all just dis Um the um so anyway mace mike in the house uh, he's got a story he can share um i'll see if i can get that picture on here um debbie good to have you california does have a huge problem it's the bigger cities um really haven't really seen it in chicago too much my last pass through there uh jane's in the house and roger byron illinois we got a special surprise for y'all coming up with those two um let's see debbie's in the house i say that already uh Appreciate that. Here's Neil and Britt. They have a YouTube channel cleverly called Neil and Britt. They travel around in an Echo full time with their two cats, or is it three cats? It's really four cats. Neil, Britt, and two cats. I'm not sure if you saw our episode on Sunday, Scott. I did not, unfortunately. Apologize, but directly relates to your topic on this evening. Now we'll go check it out, um, and everybody go check out their YouTube channel and see what they were talking about there. Um, here's a Bill and Joe. Great to see you. Um, um, let's see, it's been at the coachman transit down for dealer for three weeks. So you have an AC problem with the coach or the chassis. Then you take it all apart and find the leak. Sad. Yeah. Uh, hopefully it's a chassis. Um, 
in La um, well, that's over in Hawaii. I saw something there. There's a big fire or something, right? Um, so thank you, Live Free in a Van. Uh, uh, see, Tin Can Carl, he's going to be a guest coming up soon as well. Here's Marcia's in the house. Good to have you. Here's Gary. This is great. Um, Y'all are talking. There's John's in the house. Uh, he says he has not encountered uh, homeless in RVs. I'm over 125,000 miles away. Maybe you're in the woods, sir. Um, maybe I'm the weird one in the cities uh, and towns. Um, Mr. Kurtz is going to the Seventh Heaven concert. That's pretty cool. Um, here's Sherry in the house. Um, Sherry, I owe you a thumbnail. I'll get that to you tonight. <laughs> um, let's see. JK's in the house. Simi G. There you are, sir. Good to see you. Appreciate you being here. Uh, Roads of Life. How's it feel, sir? What you? What time do you wake up today? Your know, price is right. It starts at ten Pacific. Um, so you want to bake that into your day? That's a biggie for any retiree. Uh, price is right. Um, let's see. A few more folks. Your Saunders in the house. All this too big for money. Um, no, ma'am. It's a donation. If you like the content, like some of the content you watch and you pay for it, it's an option to you. I do this for a living. So I'm providing value. And if you find value in it, then I would appreciate you considering um, a donation. But um, Sandra, if you're not having a good night after the show, you don't have to join us. Um, and I'm not ashamed of having the viewers support the channel to help us all be better RVers. So a little bit of a shame on you, but thanks for being here. Um, Don's in the house. Uh, this is great. Uh, a lot of folks. So let's get into the uh, meet. I'm going to miss a few folks. You all are talking a lot, which is great. I couldn't miss Sandra's all caps. Please don't do that because it indicates you're yelling, right? Neil Blair, Panama City. Good to see you, sir. Uh, Uh, this is kind of an interesting point here. So um, many RV parks discriminate against vintage RVs. I know an individual with an amazing vintage RV. What's your take on that? I think if it is, because some of them do ask what year it is. I think if it is clearly in operating condition, um, well beyond functional, it's it's like an antique car, right? You invite them to car shows and people walk around, they ooh and awe at them. There was a a vintage Prevo at the KOA. I was at in Billings a couple days ago. Stunning bus. I should have asked for a tour. Um, I, I think if you are in person with your rig and they can see clearly, it's well taken care of. It's vintage, like an automobile. I think you'll be. I think you'll be fine. So um, that would be my take on it. But yeah, if you're rolling up in a big old jalopy, something that you kind of thrown together, schoolies. I really don't like schoolies. I tell you that. Um, that's my take on that. Okay, we got some super chats. Let's see if I can find those quick uh, down here. So here's Marie Sanchez. Thank you very much for a super sticker. I appreciate that. Your donation matters a lot to me and to the channel because it keeps us on the air. I do appreciate that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, Marcia, thank you for all, uh, thank you for all you do to educate and entertain us. Yes. And that's the whole point. A little bit of education, uh, a little bit of entertainment, hopefully more education than entertainment. Thank you. Marcia, I appreciate that. This is what I do for a living. Um, so you are my audience and I am beholden to you without you. I would have nothing. And, um, so I appreciate that. And here's Miss Chatter, super sticker, uh, in a, what is that? Travado? Uh, thank you, Miss Chatter. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, that's super cool of you. All right, let's uh, go. Uh, let's go here. All right, so um, thank you for those super stickers. I appreciate it. This is going to be an interesting show tonight. I knew that it would. I really toyed with not doing this or not, but sometimes. Um, so here's Mikey Rogers. Just started my van journey on YouTube. Love your channel. Learned a lot from bringing binging on your videos. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. And this is Matt. If you don't support homeless RVers, you are not an ally. Said Screeching Zoomer Teen. I would support them if they actually acted like citizens 
of the community they live in. But often they act like they're a, living in a garbage pile. And those screaming Zoomer teens maybe go help clean up the mess that I see when I drive by um, or find out what kind of help the person really needs, right? So let's get into this a little bit. This is gonna be a fun evening, um, or day, whatever it is when you're watching this. Thanks for watching the replay if you're doing that. Okay, homeless RVs, um, alluded to this. Um, somebody said they're not homeless, they're living in an RV. Well, so am I. So, you know, what's the difference? Uh, so dwellers in junk RVs on streets in encampments. Well, we'll we need to come up with a cool uh, acronym for that. Uh, again, this is um, people think uh, by a long shot that it's impacting traditional, respectful citizen RVers. So I am glad to see that. So I just want to talk about and show you, more importantly, the problem I have seen, problems, the impact. We'll have a little discussion about that and then talk about some solutions. I don't really have any, I'll be honest, um, other than... I think just putting the spotlight of a visibility on this for these people to treat their communities better than what they do from what I've seen. All right, let me show you some of the, these pictures. Again, if you saw the news, um, RV News uh, headlines this on Tuesday, you, you've seen some of this. Um, I'm not gonna show the video again. You wanna see the video again? All right, let's see the video again. Let's see, let me get me off. I just... Yeah, this is Bozeman, Montana on Saturday. It's actually pretty clean, what I've seen. Clearly, these are not man like people, stand for a night, homemade, vintage. What is that? Dragon cars, tents. Uh, this guy coming up with his car flipping me off right there. And that thing looks like it leaks like a sieve. So again, it's it's this kind of stuff. And again, across the street was condos or apartments, brand new, probably less than eight, two years old. And then a whole series of hotel rooms just around the corner from this. Like, that's actually, I was on the freeway. I saw that, knew this program was coming up. And I'm like, I've got to get off the freeway, freeway and go drive down that street and capture that, that bit of video. You see that from the freeway. And what's stunning is, You drive about one mile less than you're on Main Street, downtown Bozeman. It couldn't be more charming. It's Montana meets Rodeo Drive in California, Beverly Hills. It was it was so busy, so so lovely, so beautiful. And that was just a mile down the road. Uh, we're going to show you some stuff that was actually in Hollywood, one or two blocks from the uh, walk, the Hall of Fame. OK, let me see where we're at right here. <laughs> All right. So this is Portland, Oregon. Um, this was in a news feed. Um, I don't know how long this was. Uh, this was, if you saw the news report, it's pretty lengthy. This is the group they're trying to move off of this street and into the homeless RV park, which strangely they didn't put a picture of in the news report. So maybe on the TV feed, they actually um, put one in there. Um, I didn't screen, uh, screen scrape that. Um, so, you know, kind of the condition here, some, some repairs going on apparently. Um, and it's just all, you see the garbage can there. So the city's kind of trying. But you can see the tarp over the over the van, over the one behind the trailer, and it's you know it's 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 really not good to look at. This one I was astounded, and this I took uh, just a couple of months ago. This is Winslow, Arizona. I did street camp, urban camping as I call it, discreet parking, um, just one block from the corner of Winslow, Arizona, and I walked that morning with coffee to the go see the really cool hotel. Um, the name escapes me. And I walk by this on the way back to my van. I'm like, this is the kind of stuff that makes a city like Winslow say no overnight parking from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. That's the way they do this. This is literally this guy's van. It's on the van. It's the class C. He doesn't even have a door. Let me zoom in here for you. I mean, it's how safe is this for this person? It's all busted up. The wood is showing. The insulation is showing. I mean, it's literally, he's got a solar panel, a she, whatever, you know, it's just La Posada. I think that's the name of the hotel. Um, you know, I see this and I'm like, this directly impacts people like me that are urban campers, um, staying for a night, spending money, taking on the sites, sharing it with you. All they have to do is, and I'm going to show you the impact of this, say, 
on streets, no parking, 2 a.m. Uh, to 5 a.m. And that's all it is. And they, then they put the, um, the police out and they give tickets and they start towing people. And that's it. That's how this stuff starts. I, I digress. Okay. Let me show you this. This was a few years ago. This is 2019. I drove my brand new, look how clean that thing is. That was my very first ornament in the van was that seahorse. And then there's my little cactus garden. Um, so if you look through my cab to the left, kind of above the steering wheel, this cat is actually shaving. And this is a one half block off a really cool neighborhood. There's this lovely companion. Got her Daisy Dukes on. No problem with that. But this dude is literally shaving. Can't be bothered to do it in his rig. No, no, no. Probably didn't have water. Don't know. Um, and then they just kind of managed to kind of move into this guy's front yard. Very carefully on the parking strip, by the way. They never did cross the sidewalk into the yard. But here they are just kind of, you know, milling around. I was there for a couple hours. I was working. I'd been at a coffee shop and had had enough of that and was getting ready to do something. These guys, a gal, a big old dog, of course, right? They always got a big old dog. Uh, a lot of RVers have dogs. That, that's not fair. Um, he's looking at me, giving me the look, right? <laughs> this is Boynton Beach. Um, this was at a Cracker Barrel. Pretty sure. Look at the condition of this rig. I can't believe it even pulls. So he parked just at a Cracker Barrel. Actually, this was at Burger King, which is across the street from Cracker Barrel in Boynton Beach. And I'd seen him over there. We were at Home Depot. And I said, I've got to get a picture of this. Uh, so we drove through the uh, Burger King parking lot. Now, what, what do you think is going on here? I've got a few more for you. This is actually at a Cracker Barrel. This is at Flagstaff for the um, Overland Expo. Um, I've never seen a Cracker Barrel so packed with overnight rigs. Most of them are in pretty good condition. A lot of them are adventure vans. But this guy parked next to me. I couldn't even get out because of how he parked. Um, there was I parked right against the, the median there. You can see he did not do that damage to his car with my vehicle, I'm happy to say. But I actually am happy that he got out because I couldn't get out of that spot because of uh, the way he placed this. Look at this homemade jalopy. Is it even safe for the occupant? You know, I don't, I did see him when he got out of it. This was, whoops. Um, and he looked so disheveled and so uncomfortable. And, you know, if this is all you got, I suppose it's better than nothing. But I'm telling you, if this is the kind of stuff that's floating around, um, this is the, you know, and you're just being disrespectful. I'm getting a little preachy. Um, okay, this is Oakland, California. I found this just doing some Google search. This is a drone view of the encampment. This is what I see along the street. That garbage is piled up. We're shopping carts full of junk. This actually caught fire, and there was the article was about. Uh, Governor Newsom in California sending a very nasty letter and some uh, requirements that California's tried to install to get these kind of things cleaned up because there was a fire. Um, I can't remember if somebody died in this one or not, but um, he said, you didn't get, take care of the mess under the rules we all agreed to as kind of national you know, California Assembly. And he's like, this problem could have been avoided if you'd been acting on everything we've been talking about for homeless in California. Let me see if I think I've got a couple more. Uh, what do you think of this? Have you seen this for your real life selves? Um, let me look at some, some comments here and then we're going to talk about um, impact. And this is again, pretty real, right? Um, where is my cursor? I was losing my cursor right here. Uh, so see me, let me get uh, see me G up here. Uh, Alfred, uh, see me G. Scott, like all your topics on your YouTube channel, what are some of the solutions to this RV issue? I don't know, except to shine the light on it. And I don't want to be confrontational with those people, but maybe I, they probably, the problem is they don't care. They don't care about anything including themselves. That's the problem. <laughs> so I don't know. I think it's just helping towns, cities, 
people in charge. Thank you, Simi G. Much appreciate that, sir. Um, he's a great guy. He's in Toronto too. I think he's just helping them separate the two issues. Our veers bring money to their town. Our veers bring like traditional real RVers, uh, bring money to town. They bring exposure to their friends and family through social media, through YouTube, um, to come visit this really cool town. And if you make it hard for us to stay or enjoy, our mandate is to go to an RV park, unless I'm like a KOA, for example. In fact, I stopped at their headquarters yesterday, two days ago. What is today? On Monday. Did I stop on Monday? Tuesday, whatever day it is, I stopped in KOA Billings, Montana headquarters, and we are working on discussion to have them come on the show as a guest. I am super pumped, but I think it's just separating the two issues and not treating all people in an RV um, like a homeless RVer. All right, let's talk about impact a little bit. Or oh, let me look through here fast. Uh, oh yeah, thank you, Peggy. Yeah, I'll give a thumb up. Appreciate that. 124 people. This is so great. Um, and Neil and Britt are pretty right on here. So it ruins for law-abiding citizens. Uh, want to stop for the night, get a bite, eat and drink, support the town business, stay for the evening, and leave early in the morning. And that's what we do, right? We're not camping out for weeks, days. If you read or hopefully you saw the RV News headline news, one of these uh, homeless encampment dwellers, um, I can't remember his name, had been living in an RV on that street you saw in Portland, Oregon for six years. He was bitching about moving and then have to have some rules applied to him. I'm like, you've got to be kidding. So I think Neil and Britt are right here. Um, oh, this is funny. Uh, Marcia, or Marcia, is that how you say it? Um, don't you have to have a license plate in the RV? Yes. Uh, how would the world, how in the world would these pass inspection? They don't pass inspection. So the irony here, here is, and this is another big group, if you saw a, a gripe from the Dwellers in dilapidated RVs in street encampments um, said was um, uh, to get in the park, you had to have a um, proof that you had not even ownership, just proof of um, okay to use the vehicle and you had to have, to have a driver's license. Really heavy lifting, right? I know some people can't get a driver's license, whatever, right? but those are two rules and they were complaining that we can't get those are those rules are too stringent. We can't. I picked this up on the side of the road two months ago and somebody dragged it here and I don't know who owns it. So it's, you know, and then driver's license because it is a vehicle. So, you know, I go cite them on expired tabs I, on your license plate. You know, where does it start? Where does it stop? I, I don't know. Um, um, oh, thank you, Mason Mike. Uh, I've totally failed on that. Um, been so other. Uh, so Mason Mike sent me a couple pictures of a uh, class C RV that caught fire. So he says the pics I sent were from the homeless RV couple, uh, were from a homeless RV couple squatting at a Home Depot, were kicked out, then moved to Freddy's parking lot, which I'm guessing is kind of near, I don't know if it's nearby or not. They moved to Freddy's parking lot, uh, proceeded to shoot drugs and solicit, threatened customers, RV then caught fire. Um, so, you know, it's, it's way more than just the vehicle and where the vehicle is located. Clearly there's people with issues, big, big issues. I'm not sure we as a country really treat these things as they need to be treated, but uh, again, my Mike continues on. Now the franchise business owner is responsible for having to move the burnt out Hulk shell of this uh, RVer. Uh, they have endured this eyesore for two months trying to get corporate help. Um, so what happened to the people? You know, fine, your rig burns down somebody's thing and you don't have money to pay for it. Um, I actually saw it in Butte, Montana. Somebody put a note on it says, um, don't tell me I'm waiting for payday to get it towed out of here because it doesn't run on a, on a car. So, you know, people are clearly in bad spots. That I am sympathetic to and want to try and help. But probably these people just vanished and what they work with the owners. Like, we'll work, we'll pick up the parking lot, we'll get a job <laughs> at the business, you know, Home Depot, every place I go, they've got help wanted signs. Where was I at today? Bust. I mean, all small towns and large towns, um, police forces are hiring. I mean, everybody's hiring. So I don't know. Um, 
just let me see where it's up here. Uh, uh, Neil Blair says, uh, love Cracker Barrel. We would have to report a Class C with no side door. Definitely impact through our beers, hitting a spot. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's a thorny issue. Um, I'm just kind of shining the light on it because um, let's talk about impact. How are we doing on time? Uh, let's talk about impact because we're RVers, right? Or wannabes. Um, so think about this. These things are RVs. A garbage disposal. All right, so the city rolls out a garbage can and everybody puts their stuff in and they pick it up you know, or a dumpster. I mean, at least they can do that, the city, right? But what are these folks doing for water? Where are they emptying their tanks? Uh, uh, some of these I've seen have honey buckets next to them, which is kind of nice, I guess. But just from an RV system standpoint, for the occupant, what are they doing for fresh water? Where are they using the toilet if they don't have honey bucket provided by a very generous city? Um, maybe they're crapping in a bag and it's going in the garbage. I, you know, I don't know. But it's something that is there an impact negatively on that encampment because of these conditions being the as such, you may roll your, this one back again. I mean, holy cow. It's like, it's like something out of the third world living in a garbage dump. And it's Oakland, California, for heaven's sakes. Um, and it just, again, shows to me no lack of respect for themselves or anybody else. I could be way off. I don't know. Um, how about this? What if there's an actual emergency? You know, um, drug use. Mason Mike talked about that. And then the amount of crime probably happening, stealing little tiny things from somebody that might have a thing from somebody that doesn't have a thing at once that thing. And they get in a, you know, I'm just like, and then what do you, you put them in jail to do what? Let them go. They, you know, it's just, and then the impact of people around these communities, um, the negative impact I would suspect on, um, property values and tax dollars going to try and mitigate this problem when it could be used for, I don't know, playground equipment or other cool stuff that makes a city better versus cleaning up after these folks who just don't give a crap. If you've seen these, you know what I'm talking about. They, and if they wanted to help themselves, there are so many program services. I'm preaching to the choir. I'm probably sure. But if you really want help, um, wish, want, need, got. And I think the bottom line impact for us is um, we sort of have a bullseye target on our rigs because they're trying to take care of that problem largely, not us specifically. Let me show you a couple examples. Let me zoom in here for you. We've all seen this, right? This is Walmart. These are more and more prevalent. I'm not, I've not stayed at Walmart in probably at least a year, maybe even two, because it was such squalor. And I don't want to be part of it. Um, this one I took today in Rapid City, South Dakota. I drove into the Cabela's, was trying to find a couple of items, and I waltzed in and couldn't find what I was looking for. Um, I talked to the security staff lady, and I said, so what's the deal on... Um, I actually stayed at this Cabela's about three or four years ago. And it's a huge parking lot. Many of us have stayed at Bass Pro Shops and stuff like that. And she goes, yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't park here. Is that, is that the store's decision or is it the city's decision? So let me zoom in here for you. So look at the yellow arrow there. It's by city ordinance. And what she said is, is um, they actually never had problems at the store. In fact, they're not frequented by RVers overnighting for a quick one at all. But she said the problem was Walmart. It was overrun. So what's easier? Pass a city ordinance so nobody can stay in a parking lot overnight. Now, how does that make you feel, right? <laughs> Just like, you know, it's always the bad apple at the bottom of the barrel that spoils the whole thing. Um, you know, it's just, so again, you know, and we're traveling, so we can't really go to the, or maybe we could, I don't know. I got other fish to fry, but go to the city council meeting, get on the little docket to say, Hey, I'm a visitor. Here's my deal. Your ordinance kind of punitive to me wanting to spend money in your town. Um, and uh, she, the uh, lady at Cabela's actually said that they have security floating through that parking lot at Walmart to uh, make sure people don't adhere to them. 
So solutions, you know, I, I really don't have any um, other than just expose this uh, situation. Um, I wish I had better options. I'm, I'm sensitive to it. I know it's a thorny problem. Um, I just don't have any great ideas except that help the businesses. Um, in fact, I've, I've been, I've returned to some harvest hosts. In fact, if you look, if you're a harvest host member, I don't have data to prove this, but when I was here at least two years ago, um, and you went harvest host, there was quite a few. Um, you go to harvest host now, look at uh, Rapid City, South Dakota, zero, zero. There's some boondocker welcome, but there are zero businesses in Rapid City, a huge tourist town. Maybe they got impacted. It's carte blanche. Parking lots, no, overnight, unless the business is open. So impact, yeah. Separate the issue, yeah. You know, we just have to be better than most other RVers is my my thing, like a Boy Scout. Be prepared, but leave things better than you found it is kind of my motto. And... Um, if I see somebody doing something bad, I actually say something because I'm like, oh, you dropped your bag of garbage on the ground next to your rig and you're getting ready to leave. Put it in your rig. The garbage can's just down the thing, right? Um, you know, just little stuff like that, because in the absence of anything, absence of something, anything can happen, right? Um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm looking for some solutions. Maybe you all have some. But I'm telling you, it's been it's impacted Cracker Barrels, Walmarts even Harvest Hose, look up Rapid City for size uh, town this is with the tourism it has and it has zero because they all have to turn it off is my guess. I don't, and I don't have a screenshot from two years ago when there was a bunch. We could maybe call up old Harvest Host. Joel, remember him coming on the show? He was great. Um, all right, let's see what's uh, going on in the chat and we will call it a, kind of a wrap on my presentation there. Hopefully that you found that useful. Um, Love to know what other folks think. Uh, he didn't know super chat. You guys are being very generous tonight, John. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. I'm ready to start live. Bishop live after this. Um, thank you, John. I appreciate that. Um, so yeah, my advice is uh, be aware. Um, if it's if it's a misbehaving RVer, kind of call them out. A little confrontational without having to get you know the bear spray out. <laughs> but um, I'm I you know and when I see law enforcement. Um, in fact, the park ranger, sorry, you're going to be amazed at this, Roger and Jane. I was at Devil's Tower this morning, and the park ranger there was being really, um, what's the right word, doing his job really well. Firm, but gentle, because um, the, the crowd, the, the, the bikers, and, and they had a whole thing for RVs. And anyway, it's just, you know, being a good RVer. It's like, yes, ranger, Mr. Ranger, what 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 do you want me to do? I'm, I'm here. I was sent up here. Um, I can fit in a parking spot. Like, prove it to you. Um, so just be better than other RVers. I think that's kind of the, the deal. Well, let me look up here a little bit. Uh, uh, so here's the CMG. Uh, Mason Mike, hope to meet you and Alfred again in the future. He was at one of our roundups in Rancho Cucamonga. Uh, that was been a while ago. And one of the future uh, roundups. I'm actually working on four of them in my mind. Uh, thank you, Larry. Uh, Guy, I call him CMG. Because um, I'm working on four. I think it's going to be Luckenbach. Um, we're going to do Butte, Montana. We're going to do um, Colorado. And we're going to do Helper, Utah. So now she's kind of figuring out when. And then Florida. We've kind of you know stuck our flag in the ground at the Love, Peace, and Vans in Florida in February. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're working on getting some of those on the calendar. So stay tuned. Um so Mark has to say uh, the homeless issue. It's not about liberal conservative. It's a socioeconomic and the uneducated with little or no marketable skills. Um, I would kind of agree with you. Um, it's definitely not a liberal or conservative thing. It is a citizen thing. And if we can't work together to figure it out, um, and there's clearly people that need our help. They cannot literally help themselves. Um but man, I, you talk to these people. Um, I actually worked in a homeless shelter in Seattle uh, overnight if, um, over a period of, of months. And a lot of these folks, they just love the freedom. College educated. Coming to the Catholic Church on you know, whatever day of the week it was. Every night was homeless shelter. 
little cots. I had, to, I had to sleep with them, which was awesome. I've never heard so much grunting, groaning, farting. It was absolutely, you know, and I, we would serve them some, some soup before bedtime and I'd chat them up because I was there to help them fix the problem. They didn't want any fixing. They didn't want anything. No rules. I don't want to talk about God. I don't, you know, college educated. Just, they just, I don't know. It's super. Uh, Ed, thank you. Joining us from Baton Rouge. That's a great town. Um, uh, so Neil and Britt. Yeah, police can kind of overreact. We've seen that. Uh, um, yeah, it's a, it's a big, big issue. Mr. Johnson's in the house. The GJ King, he makes uh, screens for the cab windows in your vans. Uh, you can go to my website, go small, live large .com, click off an email to Greg, and he will happily handcraft you a set of those. Uh, GJs, as I call them, uh, they're really awesome. They're perfect for um, spring and fall. Like when it cools down here tonight, um, you can uh, put the, the bug screens in the windows and pull in the cool air. Great to have you here, sir. Um, let's do this. Let's, um, I'm parched. And after all this, I need a little reinforcement. So what do you say? <laughs> uh, let's talk about Libation Live. Um, so this is uh, Knob Creek. So I love bourbon. Um, I discovered this actually at a Costco. I can't remember where, and it's probably one of my favorite go-tos. And even though it is a hundred proof, it doesn't give you the Kentucky hug like some of the other stuff. If you haven't tried this, it's really, it's pretty widely available. They have a cool label. Let me just do this. There you go. Um, give this a shot. Let me show you the tasting notes uh, from the, this is our website. Aged longer out of principle, not obligation. Because bourbon has to be aged, I think it's at least four years, right? So this is nine years in the barrel. Let me pour you a little of this. Um, and let's just do that. And again, the point of this whole Libation Live is not to watch me drink, but to um, share tastes from the road. A lot of times from a harvest host. The one I said last night uh, had mead. Um, mead, is that what you call it? It's kind of like fermented honey. It was so sweet. Oh, look at this. Ooh. That is just beautiful, right? Cheers, everybody. Thankfully, we have uh, resources and homes on wheels. Oh, it always takes your breath away, that first one. Um, a real, real houses. Um, and my heart does go out. But just be as respectful as a citizen of that community you're in and not create a garbage dump around you. That they have a hundred percent control over. All right, so let me show you the um, so the Knob Creek. Uh, so I love that age longer out of principal obligation. Uh, the color a uh, copper to medium amber, and taste rich, sweet, woody, full bodied, almost fruity. Um, hundred proof. It's about forty bucks. Um, it's pretty uh, easy to find. And if you haven't tried this, um, and you're kind of new to the bourbon thing, I would. Um, there's a couple others I would put in front of this because this does, it's 100 proof versus 92 or even 86, which does make a difference in the Kentucky hug. But once you tune your tongue, it is really lovely and it's really affordable. About 40 bucks I discovered. Um, what else we got for you? So this day in history, we like to do that with a combination of, uh, <laughs> where is it? Where is that right here? Um, this day in history combination of um, libation live. I'm relaxing already. Great. Been a tough subject. Okay, so let me uh, uh, call this out for you. So 49 years to ago today, some of you will remember that day. I was kind of too young to really understand it. Uh, as a result of Watergate scandal, Richard Nixon becomes the first president of the United States to resign from office. Gerald Ford takes over. There's a lot of things I could say about that, but we won't. Um, 78 years ago, World War II, Nagasaki is devastated by an atomic bomb. Fat Man is dropped by the United States B-29 boxcar. 35,000 people are killed outright, including um, Japanese war workers, uh, forced Korean workers, and 150 Japanese soldiers. You know, that was kind of thing in the World War II. They bombed cities, not just military installations. You know, I hope we all kind of learned something from that, maybe. I don't know. And then the last thing is, this is kind of cool. I've just been at the uh, Devil's Tower this morning. 
the United States Forest Service 79 years ago, and the Wartime Advertising Council released posters featuring, yeah, our good friend Smokey Bear. That's pretty funny. 79 years old Smokey Bear is? Wow. Who knew, right? That's pretty crazy. Did you know any of those little fun facts? Pretty knew about the bomb. Because it was two days ago that they dropped the first one here Hiroshima, right? I think it was August 7, say being the 9th. Do I got that right or wrong? Roads of Life, let me know. Um, so let's look at some questions. We'll do our song, and then we'll call it a wrap. i got kind of a cool, interesting song for you. Um, but let's look for some questions here. There's another super chat. You guys are all being, and gals are being very generous, and I appreciate that. Uh, Lizzie M., love your channel. Thank you, Lizzie. I appreciate that. That's very sweet of you. Um, I love it, too. You know, it's it's a lot of work. Um, I can't remember the lady's name that was all screaming at me for taking donations, but, you know, this is what content creators do, right? Uh, thankfully, I worked with two great brands, um, Volta Pier 3 Lithium System and Embassy RV. Holy, we've got some cool stuff coming up, ladies and gentlemen, with Embassy RV. I'm actually going to be, we'll be doing a What's Up Wednesday in a couple weeks with Terry at the headquarters, and we're working really hard to get me in, 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 in an Embassy RV overnight, so um, in September. So we are working really hard, um, but... Uh, Thank you, Lizzie. I appreciate that. I worked very hard on it. And uh, we have a new um, Van Tour video coming up. I'm actually going to move those from Thursday to Friday. I think it was a little saturated for three days in a row, so we're going to spread it out. Um, you love the meat. I knew you might. <laughs> Frisco T, what's up? Um, I tried two different flavors, and they were cool. They were good. It was just it was so sweet. Um, it, it's like, it's like um, ice wine, uh, except it's not cold. And um, it was it was a good. Their beer was was good, not great. And they did trivia last night. It was so so loud in there. Uh, but a cool harvest house, Gillette, Wyoming. Um, can't remember the name of it, but uh, love the meat. That's funny. Um, you all having a great chat in here. Uh, uh, so roads of life here he is. So he's gonna be on next week. Don't miss that. That's going to be an engaging discussion. Um, many say there's an issue. They have mental issues or addictions, or they don't care. This doesn't provide solutions. Just excuse why it happens. Cities need to spend money on solutions. Yeah, I agree. But, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. And, um, you know, if they don't want help, the city's got to have land someplace, right? Um, and it's, you, have, you have to force the issue. And that's what Portland is not doing but again if you google a few of these um san diego now is actually forcing people to make decisions and forcing their rigs off the road they've had enough um i don't know i'm very thankful for everything i have i just want to help people keep, reach their dreams uh she remembers the watergate hearings on tv i was upset because in interrupted by brady bunch reruns <laughs> remember those oh, God. Uh, so beautiful. Uh, Diane says she got res rescued from a forest fire, and uh, Smokey was rescued from a forest fire. Was that the actual part of the bear thing? Because uh, he had a burned bear. Um, uh, sixth, I've missed it by a day. Knew you would know that. Roads of Life. Thank you. August six, Hiroshima. August nine, and then Japan surrendered like just a couple of days later, right? And that's all the bombs America had, right? There wasn't a third one, so thankfully it sort of did what it was intended to do, which is to get him to stop. Um, uh, Crypto is going to be at the embassy, uh, MCRV headquarters on August 22 to tour and maybe put a deposit down. Um, say nice things about me. You're going to love it. it you can eat the lunch, your lunch off the floor in that factory. It's unbelievable. The best factory I've probably have ever seen. Um, it's so clean. All right, where are we at here? Uh, let me share the... Um, but an uh, interesting show, really good group tonight. I see a lot of chats going back and forth, and that was uh, part of the whole idea here. Um, yeah, Frisco T, I'm not sure on the, I'm it's just, it's only a month away. So I'm, I'm trying to find like one camp out, one Vanbury, as I call them, per quarter where it makes sense weather wise. So we've kind of got February, so then Lukenbach, and then I kind of want to get to Colorado, um, and then Idaho in the fall is what I'm thinking. Um, or not I know, um, Butte. Uh, you got to get a Butte, badass Butte. That's what we're going to call it. Uh, it's such a great town. I, I wish I was still there, um, but I want to work with the city and 
get a parking lot where we can all be at. Uh, so it's a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of work. Where is she up here? <laughs> I just want to turn this on. Where is she? The screaming lady. Uh, we just want to give her a blessing. Where is she right here? Um, maybe I can't find her on purpose. Uh, don't matter. Anyway, I work for you, essentially. Um, okay, let's do um, one last thing. Oh, yeah, give a thumb up. Appreciate that. And there we go. So music. Okay, this is very different than what I normally talk about, um, but I was served up this um, new music playlist um, by Apple Music, and um, this is really a cool song. If you like kind of ambient house music, it's in the background. You can tap your th uh, foot to it. Uh, tap your thumb, right? But it's not in your face. Um, this is a really great song. So this is house music. Uh, it's upbeat. It's I use it a lot for concentration. So when I was putting the show together yesterday and today, I've been listening to this this whole playlist. But this song in particular uh, was one of the best ones in that playlist. So Mediterranean Chill is the name of the song by Zenny N. There is no um, vocals. It's just instrumental. And it has this kind of Mediterranean theme to it. It's really a cool song. So if you're looking for a little different tonight with your Bartles and James, or Mead, <laughs> uh, spin this up, and I think you will enjoy it or not. It's kind of a love, love or hate thing with um, a lot of folks with music. So, But uh, give it a shot, and um, I think you'll like it. And with that, we're going to uh, let me do just one more cursory thing that we'll call it a wrap. Um, I just want to see if I hate missing Steve. It was GEG Steve. We saw him last. Was it last weekend already? We had a roundup in Spokane. We kind of sold out the parking lot in the at the REI. The manager came out, didn't scold us, didn't tell us to leave. It's like it's Saturday morning, guys. How long are you gonna be here? What was his name? Mike, right? But GEG Steve. Um, oh, this is a beauty. I'm so glad we found this, Steve. Um, I was this close. I was literally. I. I, I I drove by, I didn't know there was a KOA and I uh, went to go see the tower and the place was just swarming with people. I mean, the Sturgis biker fest. I mean, it, everything is swarmed with, with bikers and they're cool people. These guys haven't come out of their tent yet, but oh, they left on their bikes already. Um, they'll be back. Hope to meet them. Anyway, when I came down the, the, the mountain, um, I stopped the KOA parking lot to see what the Verizon signal was like to do the show tonight. And I'm telling you, if you've been there, um, Steve, you know, the parks here in the, the mountain tower thing is right above you. It'd been so cool to go to sleep with the stars and the, and there's a couple cool bar restaurants right there too, right? The Verizon just wasn't strong enough. Uh, it's barely strong enough here. So I was, because of what's up Wednesday, missed a really cool, really cool experience. But um, thank you for bringing that up uh, next time, right? Of the Devil Tower, once you see it, it's kind of like, you know, what's the big Mount Rushmore? Uh, once you've kind of seen it, you don't need to go back. It, for me, anyway. Um, let's see. Uh, Eric, do you carry a 30 amp extension for pull in spots? Yes, 100%. Um, and I can dial down. So um, my, my, my uh, input into the um, Volta system all the way down to 5 or 10 amps. So I can just uh, an extension cord and um, the adapter thing, dial it down, and I'm done. Um, so yes, must have one of those. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited to get to the Badlands tomorrow. It's going to be hot. It's like in the high 80s in the sun, so I'm already sweating. But um, um, I probably passed. Thank you, Ken Carl. Have you heard they're marking off campsites at the wall to limit numbers? Um, Entrance here, what you find when you get there? I camped there recently with uh, no designated sites. You know, I can't remember if you get to Wall Before the Badlands turnoff coming out of Rapid City. I'm really into the trying the BLM land thing. And I got a really special treat for y'all. I discovered at REI. Thank you, Beyond Intentions, for turning me on to REI. And um, wait till you guys. I'm actually going to record some of it when we get done here. Um, it is the coolest thing. And I just chomp it at the bit to get this working in a BLM environment. Um, so I may or may not go to wall of drug. I can't remember if I pass it because I'm going to probably drive through. I think is what I'm going to, I don't know. We'll see. It's fan life. Um, that's why we cancel it. Cause I'm just not sure. Um, so I had, I'm sorry to say, 
uh, we'll do others. All right. I, I'm, I know I'm missing some folks. I apologize. Um, but uh, what is this? It's not pronounced less. It's for Lee's Sim Summit. Oh. <laughs> Rhodes Lane is on next week. Please do not miss that. Uh, tell all your embassy RV friends and wannabes uh, to come harass me and Rob <laughs> tomorrow, next week. Next week, it's going to be so much fun. Um, all right. I think that's it. One, one last check over here. Uh, yeah, that's that's all we wrote. All right, folks. Thank you very much for another What's Up. We had a big crowd in here tonight for a very um, thorny issue. Um, but something must be done. And I'm sad to say it's affecting our viewers like me and you um, with a lot of no. It's way easier to say no than it is yes or even discuss it. So that's the problem. And we just need to separate the issue from that to us. And I think that's a big thing for these um people in charge to understand. So with that, we say thank you very much. Uh, peace be with you and have a great week. We'll see you next Wednesday. Roads of Life's on. Wait, holy cow. We might start Livation Live the very first minute. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Um, and just thanks again for watching. Thanks for being uh, uh, without you. This would not be happening. I am sure of that. Uh, so just thank you all very much for your support tonight and otherwise. So we'll see you next week and new video on Friday and again on Sunday. See you soon. Thank you. Peace.